Hey everyone, and welcome to this Meet the Speaker video. I'm here today with Drew Madelon. How are you doing, Drew? Great. How are you doing, Vlad? Pretty good, pretty good. Snow starting to melt finally after the small snowstorm we had this week, so uh, looking forward to the weekend. Absolutely, uh, me too. Uh, before we go further, do you want to do a quick introduction about yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, so my name is Drew Madelon. I am an Office 365 consultant at Protivity. Uh, I am kind of running, uh, I really live in the technical space, so I, I come from an IT pro background. I do a lot with administration and management and I help a lot of different kind of companies at different scale get into Office 365. Uh, I do a lot with a really kind of target around security and administration around that and, and really the life cycle of how people can get started. That's where I kind of come into play. Awesome. And for how long you said you started a bit with an IT pro administration background? For how long did you start working with SharePoint or how long ago? Yeah, so I actually started out in my career as a developer. So I did a, three years of backend development uh, and then became, then I switched over to network administration. So I was doing uh, server architecture, network architecture, and running a couple different data centers for a company. And part of my role as a network administrator was to handle applications, handle server applications. And uh, we brought in a firm and we installed SharePoint. And this would have been about 11 years ago now. So 10 years ago now, it was right when SharePoint 2010 came out. It was kind of the end of 2007. Okay. So uh, we rolled out SharePoint 2010 and I was working on that from an internet perspective for three plus years on the back end. It was a pretty good farm, uh, but it actually ended up becoming a primary revenue generator and becoming like a tier one application. Uh, at that at the last com at the company I was at, so I kind of got to know the full back end of it. I mean, we were implementing different hot fixes with Microsoft. We were getting to be in the guts of SharePoint, and uh, we built a, a lot of kind of cool applications on it. And that kind of led into deciding that I it, it took over my full time job. It really did. So I switched into enterprise content management. I, I jumped into the consulting realm about seven years ago and have been doing really SharePoint. I started really in SharePoint based consulting, so a lot of on prem work. Uh, and then in the last, I'd say, three or four years with the shift that we've all gone through, I've really started to target larger scale companies and dealing with the full collaboration stack, and, uh, but still kind of am targeted with how things work. And that's kind of always what intrigues me why SharePoint works the way that it does and, and how that changed in Office 365. So why does SharePoint work the way it does? Because it's been <laughs> the same for a while. Yeah. Content types are still content types, right? Permissions are still permissions. So there's still a lot, of the, a lot of the back end that stays the same. And I think that's important when you're talking about whether you're at different conferences and all the speaking that, that I do and that we do. It's a lot of helping people understand that SharePoint still is kind of SharePoint behind the scenes. Modern is modern, but we still have content types and columns and permissions and a lot of that knowledge still applies for the last like 15 years almost oh yeah site collections web applications none of those really change and really understand being able to understand that level um i actually try to when i do a lot of sessions with power users i actually try to start there because i think it's really important and i thought it was important to understand the the background of sharepoint like the at least a high level backing of sharepoint even as a power user to understand the words like the word like site collection the word web application um, what a site versus a web is. Some of those basic little or like high level things really can help you when you're Googling for information as an example, right? Being able to understand what those things are and learn SharePoint to talk, as I've kind of talked about it, is <laughs> it, we have our own little language, right? You don't necessarily have web applications and web parts and um, page layouts and master pages. Those are different things than- SharePoint terms. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and what keeps you excited about like 10, more than 10 years after uh, to keep working with the same tech? I'd, I'd like to, what I see is the the evolving nature of it. I think the what's really been fun in this space is that no projects really have been the same. Right? So I've done a, a ton of internet, a ton of migrations, a ton of what I do, again, what I've targeted more in the past is around business process, but every project is unique, right? I'm not rolling out a, a standard website to anyone. I work we work a lot with the business to understand what technically is needed for them. And every internet we roll out, every scenario, every business I work with, we build something different or we come up with something different. And it's always led to exciting uh, different types of projects. So no project's really the same, right? I'm not doing an exchange migration every time. I'm not just moving data. 
uh, we're kind of we're helping transform business process we're helping transform communication or i've done whether it's from ocr right we're, we're changing we're potentially saving a lot of money for people and it's it's always different and it's always kind of fun to challenge the technology and challenge the other people that i work with to think about things that way and really trying to break the status quo Awesome, and you've also been, you mentioned talking to power users, things like that. You've been speaking in the community for a while now. Uh, do you remember what your first event huh. that you spoke at was at? I do. Uh, so it was, this has probably been five years ago now, five or six years ago now at SharePoint Fest Chicago. It was actually my first one, and it was a joint session, and it was about the product, implementing a product catalog in SharePoint 2013 on-premises. So it was a 400 level session of actually like how the product catalog feature worked in SharePoint 2013 uh, and how it is built, how to roll it out, how to structure search, how to build this display web part. So that was my first one and I vividly remember it because it was so technically in depth. I think I had like eight people because it was like, because no one knew what the product catalog was. like. In the, but, the, but the people that did were like, wow, that was, you're right. I could use the product catalog, but it was not the highly abused feature I realized after. <laughs> no, but from a technical point of view, those are, you don't get a lot of people in those 400 level sessions, but they're all super interested, which is yeah. fun. Yeah, it's, it's definitely interesting. Like I've done a couple 400 levels and I've done a bunch of, I've actually started to do a couple more 100 to kind of try to change things up because I, I do see value in kind of both sides and um, being able to, I think in the consulting side of the world that I'm in, I think it's really important to be able to see both sides of that. That it, when I talk with the business, right? Um, and I know we're gonna talk about our sessions coming up here soon too, which is a lot of us is talking to business users and understanding what people need. And you have to be able to talk with people at a level that is not 400. And if I sit with a, a, an HR team talking about site provisioning, um, I don't need to tell them and go into the, the details of, of how site provisioning is going to work. I need to, they need, I need to help articulate some of the basic things that they need to know. So I do try to challenge myself in some of those angles to, and re, really for, I know there's important things out there that everyone needs to know. So I do kind of approach it from, I have started kind of shifting to incorporate both versus really just those 400 level deep dives of why it works the way that it does. Awesome, and yeah, you, uh, like you mentioned, one thing that is funny is that you actually started at a big conference compared to most people that started at user group, SharePoint Saturday, you went yeah. directly to the top at, at SharePoint Fest, which is still a 800, well, Chicago is about six, 700 people conference, so it's a, yeah, it, I definitely didn't do one for a little bit after that. I think it took, it was like six or eight months or I didn't do much after that. And it was, then I, um, I did start taking over at that point. I, I am a, the board member, one of the board members of our local user group. So I do a lot. Uh, I run all of our, I run the majority of the events with our user group and help coordinate speakers and support that. So I've become more involved in, in those different angles. And I've started to speak at a lot of different SharePoint Saturdays and different events around the world. But really, you're right, I did kind of jump in there. But I will say the reason that that happened was because of the company I was in. I'm based in Chicago, right? It was, I'm local. Oh yeah, it made it a lot easier. It did, it did. And, and now you're speaking at Microsoft's biggest conferences, uh, Ignite two years in a row, I think, and SharePoint Conference as well. Yep, yeah, so a couple of years at Ignite, I've been talking about OneDrive a lot recently. OneDrive and SharePoint have been some of the areas that I've started to talk about a lot more. Uh, and so I've been talking about OneDrive for the last two. I'm going to be talking about OneDrive again at at SharePoint conference and, and doing a session around site provisioning as well. But yes, I have kind of changed or I have kind of gone into some bigger audiences versus my first eight. Uh, I think last year we had over 500 uh, in our room. So we are definitely getting different numbers and different <laughs> as far as uh, the people we're talking to. So what are your session? You mentioned one about OneDrive, one about uh, site provisioning at SharePoint conference. I know one of them really well, but I'll let you talk about them. <laughs> So the first one that I'm going to be working down uh, is is around OneDrive management. So uh, since I do come from the IT pro side, I do kind of, I do work with clients on rolling out OneDrive for business. And some of the things that I've seen around that is people really underappreciate what rolling out OneDrive really means. 
uh, and how to effectively manage it versus just kind of flipping some switches on. So they say, oh, well, I go into the admin center once and I make some configurations, then I'm done. And in my opinion and what I've seen is from successful rollouts, that's not what you need to do. So I'm doing a session called taking OneDrive for, uh, OneDrive for Business Administration to the next level where I am going to be talking about a lot of the experiences I've seen for rolling out OneDrive, I'm talking about sync, sync deployments, talking about uh, sharing a strategy that you should have and, and leading into adoption and ongoing administration versus just single point administration. So that's going to be the first one. That's going to my, that's one by myself. And then I'm presenting one with some guy named Vlad around <laughs> from start to finish, how to create your modern SharePoint site provisioning solution, uh, which, which of course is with you. And we did, we've talked about for a while for doing site provisioning and uh, we did this one at Ignite last year. And it was it was a great session. I thought we we talked we targeted we targeted a lot of things. And our goal for this session is really to understand the landscape of what you can, what you really can do, and what we've seen be successful for site provisioning in Office 365. Because there are so many different technologies that can come into play from from Power Apps to Flow to site designs to all the different types of Azure workloads that can tie into this, along with SharePoint and Teams and and how groups work into this play and, and, and how you template versus site design and the site templating, sorry, the, the teams templating versus site designs. Like there's just a lot. And um, what we were, what we want to do here is kind of give people the ideas of how you can structure your own solution and show people the different tool sets that you can use, not necessarily telling you this is how you should do it, but these are the things, these are the ways that you can do it. And how do the, all these things come together to really give you the right site provisioning solution for you. And we definitely talk in the sessions that you part you talk about and the way I talk about it's how we talk with the business about what they really need for site provisioning and and how they can do it. So those are the two main breakouts that we have uh, that I have that I'm, I'm working towards and really looking forward to heading out to Vegas. Awesome, and one last question. But as you know, the party has always been a huge part of every SharePoint conference every night. It's not announced yet. We're about six weeks away from the conference. If you had to bet, what do you think Ooh. the attendee party would be? Ooh, so that's been interesting because if we go back to all the different SPCs, um, and we go back to this year, we go back to last SP, we go back to last SPC. Uh, I'm going to go with a band again. I'm going to go with music. I'm going to go with okay. um, kind of following some of the vein of some of the Ignite scenarios. And um, I don't think it's going to be at the grant. I'm not sure, but I'm guessing that it's going to be music centric, which I think is a, a good idea. And then that will, will probably include some, some off type of games or some other activities that you can get away from music as well. But I want some names. Names? I want some names. Ooh. So last year we had the B-52s. Um, I'm gonna go with someone a little bit more recent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Vlad, were you even alive when the B-52s hits were coming out? I I I looked at the dates. It was in the 70s, in 78, something like that. No, I think they already did their first retirement when I was born. I'm just saying. So no. So I'm gonna go with. I'm going to go with someone that we don't really know. I'm going to go with someone that's a little bit newer, and I'm going to go with uh, someone on the rock side of the world. Okay. So still no names, but I at got least no, you, have, you gonna, narrowed it down a bit. I did. I did. I did. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Thrum. Always great chatting to you, and uh, looking forward to seeing Vegas. Looking forward to it.